Melting points are frequently used in organic chemistry to determine your compound identity and purity. Uh, the apparatus to decide your melting point is called a melt tank. It has a major following component. It has a thermometer to read the temperature, a magnifying glass so that you can observe the status change, and a dial to control the temperature. Uh, now let's start with the, the packing sample. You take a capillary tube, make sure the open end pointing at your sample, and you tap very gently on your sample. Use the minimum possible amount of sample. If you pack too much, your melting point will be a big range. After that, you tap it gently. Let the sample falling down to the bottom of your uh, melting point tube. If your sample doesn't fall, you can use a condenser and drop your melting point tube into the condenser. Let it bounce back and forth several times so the sample will pack nice and tight at the bottom of the melting point tube. And now the sample is prepared. We're going to take a rough melting point. There are three slots in the melt tank. And let's put this in the middle slot. To see your sample, make sure you turn the switch on. And then through the light from underneath the magnifying glass, you can see your sample. Now it's sitting in the slot. And now we're going to raise the temperature at a relatively fast speed. Uh, let's put the dial to 8. This will allow the temperature to raise at about 20 to 30 degrees per minute. Now you need to uh, watch your sample very carefully and uh, catch the moment when the sample start to shrink and the first drop of liquid start to show that is the beginning of your melting point. Since this is an unknown sample, we don't know if it's going to melt at 60 degrees or 200 degrees. So a rough melting point is necessary to help you narrow down the melting range. And the temperature is rising very fast. And now it's about 60 degrees and the sample is still solid. So we're going to keep watching. Now the first drop of liquid starts to show and I'll take a quick glance at the thermometer and remember the temperature. You don't have time to write down because it melts so fast. And the temperature is about 100.5 degrees. And then when the last little bit of the sample melt and I take a second look at the thermometer and now the temperature is 124.8 degrees. So this is your melting range. And now remember to turn off your melt temp and take your used melting point tube out. So now we know this unknown sample roughly melt between 100 and 128 degrees. And we prepare a second sample to take a precise melting point. And again, tap your sample very gently to the open end of the melting point tube. And let it drop down to the bottom of the melting point tube. If it doesn't, you can use a condenser or any other long glass tubing to help with your packing. And now we put this sample uh, well. Uh, now you need to be careful. If the temperature is still high, you need to wait until the temperature drop about 30 degrees below your melting point. That means the temperature has to be below 70 degrees for our unknown. So the temperature reaches about 120 degrees now. So it's still very high. And we are going to um, use a different melt tank to save time. So t 
turn it on and put your sample in the middle slot. Make sure you can see the sample very well. And now start to raise the temperature. In the beginning, you can raise the temperature relatively fast at about uh, 20 degrees per minute. That roughly equal to the setting of an eight on the dial. And you keep, eye, keep your eyes closed. When the temperature is about 70 degrees, you need to bring your dial down to three or two. Make sure the temperature raise at about a rate of one or two degrees per minute. So this will give you an accurate measurement of your melting point. Now this is a starting point, 120.8 degrees. And ending point, 122.5 degrees. So there was the first drop. You can start seeing it turn. And there it's disappearing on us until it all appears as a liquid. So the first drop will be the first number you write down. When it all turns to a liquid will be the second number you write down. So we are done with the melting point of your unknown. And now take your melting point Take your used melting point tube out and turn off this melt time. Let it cool down so you can be ready for the next run. So the steps to determine the identity of your compound. Uh, prepare the sample and take a rough melting point. We finished the second step already. And the next one, take an accurate melting point. We already did this one. The accurate melting point is about 120 degrees to 120 uh, 23 degrees. And then that next one, you need to perform mixed melting point to confirm the identity. So you look at the melting point chart. From this chart, you can see there are compounds name and there are um, melting points. And according to our melting point, our sample fall in this line or the next line. So our sample could be benzoic acid, which has melting point 122 to 123 degrees, or trans steel beam, 122 to 124 degrees. So how do you know which one is your sample? At this point, you're going to take your unknown sample and then mix them with the two authentic sample. So we have some pre-mixed sample ready. So your unknown mixed with the benzoic acid, roughly half-half, and use your glass rod to grind it a little bit, make sure it mix completely. And the second sample, you do the same, take a half your unknown and half of the trans bean, and then mix them. And after this, mixing the samples, you take the two capillary tubes and pack the sample into the capillary tube use the method we mentioned. Make sure you can identify which tube has which sample. This is very important. Don't put the right identity on the tubes. So now we are ready to take a mixed melting point. Remember, melt time has three slots, so it can hold up to three samples. And we can take these two mixed samples, put them into the melt tank, and determine the melting point simultaneously.
And now you repeat the steps how to determine the melting points. And one of the sample will melt at exactly your unknown temperature. That means that is the right identity for your compound. The other sample will melt at a much lower temperature and give you much broader range because it's the wrong compound. So you introduce impurity to the compound and it makes the melting point drop. Here you can see that the one on the left has just melted, meaning that it's an impure sample, where the other two have not melted yet, meaning that they have higher melting points and are likely the pure samples. After you finish everything, always make sure you turn it off and uh, throw away the used um, melting point to capture tubes to glass disposal and uh, clean up the desk. One final thing we need to point out is the recording of the temperature. Um, the chart given to you, it has, uh, um, it doesn't have decimal places. So this is just a rough idea. When you actually record your temperature, you need to pay attention to your significant figures from the thermometer you can record 121.2 degrees, that's the starting of your melting point, to 122.5 degrees, that is the ending of your melting point. Always make sure you have one digit after the decimal places and record the melting range of your observation.